let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce everybody and feel free to say hi when I call your name. So we got here for our brand new meta discussions now. We've been pushing them off for a while, so we have our lovely captain, Nick Ward, over here. How you doing, Nick? <laughs> we also have Zeke, our team dad. Hello. We have Alex Cantrell with us. I guess he's AFK, wow, okay. And <laughs> we have myself, Quorum. Hello, everybody. And then we have our our wonderful guest, Josh Stallworth, here with us today from Card Fight Empire. How are you doing, man? Hey guys, how are you doing? So let's go ahead and start talking about set twelve. Considering that um, everything was just spoiled, we're now moving into Link Joker stuff. Um, I think the biggest thing we're gonna be talking about is OTT stuff, right? Mainly OTT getting that really good stride. <laughs> oh yeah, Iki Kishima. Mm -hmm. uh, beautiful stride. Yeah. Definitely, Battle Sisters are looking to be in a really solid place after some ball drops. A lot of the big pusher. Of, I don't know how large it's going to be because I don't think the large got anything incredibly possible so, besides like pretty too white, column white. Yeah, in my opinion, uh. <laughs> Like, Luard got the Drag Strider, um, but it's kind of like, not disappearing off the face of the earth, but like, it's dwindling in numbers right now, especially in Japan, because uh, of the existence of Narukami, and, and her starter that just says, oh yeah, I rest and I'm not even G-break, and I just find cards from your drop zone. So yeah. Luard's whole thing of guarding with grade ones early, like, is eliminated, because if you guard at all, they will bind whatever you guard with, and then like, they just de deplete your board so heavily, like, it's so easy for them to get upwards of, like, Thunder Strike 10 and 11 from, like, Stry Turn 2. Or even yeah. Stry Turn 1 if you give them enough to work with. Especially with Narukami getting cards, I'm sorry, uh, getting cards like Plasmatron, where if you target it, you have to find something and things like that against Luard's place, like, using Carnivore Dragon, you know, doomed. Right, exactly, like, Luard's whole thing was, like, to control the board before that, and, like, especially with that grade 2 that they have that says if it's targeted, you have to bind something, like, that's just so powerful against anything, because you can't, like, target it or attack it, so you either have to leave it there for it to do damage to you, which, like, leaving it there is a huge risk, or you have to target it and bind something or attack into it and bind something. Um, not to mention their G-Guard that they already had from the Fighter's Collection, like, amazing card, pretty much. Impede. Yeah. Yeah. Impede. Uh, Bulwark became really good now because they, since they can do, like, since they can do, like, Thunderstrike 8 to 12, like, oh, yeah. Bulwark now, re like, retires three rested units. So, like, with Board White being Lord's weakness, like, Lord does really bad against that matchup. Mm -hmm. It's like the uh, Doomed effect where Doom was a really. People thought it was really awful when it came out because it was just not effective in shadows. And it's the same thing with Bulwark, where Bulwark was just whatever because you could never get enough to make it worthwhile to use. To use. Exactly, but now that they released it to be like that, you can Thunderstrike so many at a time, like it becomes a good or a solid card. Yeah. Be scary. Trust me. Yeah. So that's pretty scary. Um, OTT, like the Battle Sister deck in general is, uh, and Susano for that matter, are yeah, so awesome. scary because of uh, Ikikishima. Yeah. Uh, that card's like disgustingly broken in my opinion. Like literally, I, I don't know if I want to call it bad card design or not, just because like Bushiro gave us a mechanic at the beginning of this format, which was G guarding and then they made a card that takes away that mechanic from you. So now that everyone's like gotten used to like G-guarding and you know how to manage your hand and how to manage your defenses with uh, G-guarding, like Bushiroad I guess is trying to shake it up. But like in them shaking it up, like there are so many decks that are like their G-guarding is crucial to them or yes. crucial to their survival during the turn. Uh, Gear Chronicle, like Gear Chronicle and the can no longer against them set up the Vainglory play and going to header around. Mm -hmm. uh, they can't Urlu if they don't have a PG. They're dead. 
Yeah. Fight Brothers Hell Hard 8. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hell Hard 8 literally cannot, like, they have to go up manually now, which means that they definitely lose. Um, what else? Shadows, even, like, when I play Shadows, like, I rely quite a bit on my G Guardians, Plot Maker, um, Dismal, etc. Uh, so, yeah, Iki Kishima is a really very solid disgusting card. card. Um, also, I, I don't think like a lot of people like uh, have looked into it or not, but um, the, I think the new Nubatama deck is very, very good with Mukuro um, and the new Tamahagane. Like, the new Tamahagane is actually like quite amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I love that card. It's really, yeah. really good. Yeah, the new Tamahagane is really solid. Yeah, Metsu. Yeah. But honestly, like, I feel like this whole set is just, uh, very solid. Like, every support that every clan got out of the set, like, I feel like no clan really got shafted unless it's by the presence of another clan. Like, this kind of feels like, uh, GBT2. I don't know if you guys were around during that format. But, like, I was, GBT2, yeah. Yeah, that's um, when I started. <laughs> yeah, so literally GBT2 for me was really annoying because I was a Neo Nectar main back then. So it's like, they released Neo Nectar in the same set as Narc. When we got Vanquisher at the same time as we got like a bunch of Asha stuff, I wanted to play Asha and made Nub, but you know, like Neo Nectar literally dies in our economy because we depend on recycling mm -hmm. from our drop zone. So when cards get found from our drop zone, like especially when they get to choose, we get really sad. Um, but yeah, Sigma, like in our economy, like Dragonic Descendant is gonna make a comeback uh, oh, because yeah. of all their new stuff, like their Eradicators are really good uh the sigma like grade three and also like lynchu the new grade four um four that card, stride. yeah it's basically like a board wipe it's basically um the night rose stride yeah uh, i can't remember the name right now uh okay. i even heard of one of our friends actually gonna okay sorry you're cutting out a uh, bit there James, you know he wanted to Descended Sigma into uh, Vanquisher Sparking. Oh that, yeah, that's what I actually, was gonna do as well. Yeah, I actually fought that recently, and that's really scary. Like I was at like I think uh, my opponent had like bound enough of my cards to be like Thunderstrike 12, and like literally I was playing like the most optimally. There's nothing I could do to stop from being bound unless I just want to take attacks and die. Because pretty much at the point where you're at like five damage, you have to guard their attacks. And so then you're giving them like drop zone fuel and obviously fueled fuel because you have to pressure them with your own rear guards. Um, so basically, like he uh, got Thunderstrike 12 and then he played a Sigma on the rear guard circle and he was on voltage. Uh, Ooh. So everything in his front row literally got uh, 36k, mm -hmm. uh, including like the uh, the Sigma. And I guess I misread it, but like. He attacks with his other rearguard circle, um, which was the card that says if I target it, I have to bind one. Or if I attack it, but I bind one. So I literally hadn't like even tried to go after that card for almost the entire game. Uh, because most of the time when I wanted to attack him to it, like I had something valuable in my drop zone that I would just rather keep or make him forcefully bind. Uh, so I hadn't gone after that card. Uh, he attacked me with it. It gains 9k from being Thunderstrike 5, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so it had 18k plus 36 to the front row, um, and so he attacked me for huge, I PG'd, and then he attacked me for huge, I PG'd, and then he attacked me with Sigma, and I PG'd, and I was like, oh, I'm safe, and he was like, counter boss one, discard, who stand, and I was like, oh. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. So we'll definitely see Sigma as more for rearguard plays in Vanquisher. Not necessarily for the stride bonus, right? Because the G zone, I you were talking about this earlier with me, uh, Zeke, about how there's not enough room in the G zone. Yeah, really. Vanquisher has like this really tight G zone where it's almost like prone to where um, Vanquisher has gotten a Vanquisher stride every single set, but all of Vanquisher strides have been really solid so far. Like V Max is a one of obviously, but Voltage is definitely a two, uh, two to four of, and so it's the v buster because mm -hmm. v buster is just solid throughout the game i think v buster is an automatic four of yeah i don't yeah. think they're 
I might be like in the singular opinion of this, but I don't think that Bankster's G Zone is as tight um, as something like Gear Chronicle. Like, in my opinion, um, V Buster just replaces Conquest yeah. in their deck, and uh, Conquest just goes bye bye because it literally had not that much synergy with Bankster to begin with. But yeah. because you didn't have a better option, like, they just ran Conquest. Um, so now Conquest will probably purely be reserved for the, like, the Erad deck. Um, but even then, like, Eradicators now have a better option in Linchu mm -hmm. um, and Voltage because they can also bind cards as well, too. Now, especially because, like, I saw, like, an Eradicator deck when they run the, the um, Thunderstrike starter. And so, like, that's just so disgusting to me that, like, any like narukami deck can just run the thunder strike starter and rest and bind your cards every single turn and there's nothing that you can do to stop them from doing it yeah um i was talking to someone the other day about how like i don't know if, if you guys ever played Yu-Gi-Oh or not but like back when card fight first came out uh, i quit Yu-Gi-Oh to join card fight um when card fight first dropped in japan that was like seven years ago six years ago or something since i've been playing but um I was talking about, like, I was trying to, like, you know, explain the Narukami deck to a Yu-Gi-Oh player, and I was like, well, you guys know how you have, like, a remove from play zone? He's like, yes. And I'm like, but you guys have options to get your cards back, like, return from different dimension, uh, the trap card, and, like, you can run all these things. They also have a side deck, which, like, yeah. is good, but, like, they have all these things where they can get back cards from their bind zone, and, like, in Vanguard, like, the reason why Bankshire is so strong, in my opinion, is because there's absolutely no way to get cards back from your bind zone, unless you are Gear Chronicle, and even then, like, you can't get back cards as fast as they can get rid of them. Oh, no, you can't. Um, there's, like, one card that gets back two for a Counter Blast, and it's you draw the Soul Charge. But yeah, that's, uh... That's not it. Do you play Demiurge? Yeah, or you play yeah. Demiurge, and you have it's, to be playing CTP for that. Yeah. Support. Right, so you you have to, I mean, I think that people, uh, that won't be as much of a problem as people might think, like, should you be a gear player that uh, has a locals that's full of, like, Narukami players? Um, I think that the Demiurge would be, like, a good Tekken for you, especially because, like, I don't know if you guys saw the build that won the Japanese tournament re recently, like, right after GBC 12 dropped, but it's, like, an entire ZTB uh, Zodiac Time Beast deck, which also yeah. Really yeah. Like, gear next into play. That card's amazing, um, in my opinion. Like a lot of people thought that it was going to be like equivalent to Next Age or worse than Next Age just by like reading it. But I was like, I read that card and I was like, you guys are so crazy. Like this card's like amazing. Like before, um, not only does it allow you to like sometimes kill your opponent earlier because if you run like a high amount of crits, like that build ran. Uh, I think 10 crit. Um, they also ran no or water, no melum, and no history maker. So that just like shows you like in itself how powerful the advantage of that deck is. But because um, Gear Next allows you to put triggers back to your deck as long as there's ETB, um, you can just choose three triggers from your effect and instead of discarding, you get to um, put them back to your deck and then you can use a rear guard attack to like shuffle the deck before you attack the next time with Gear Next. So it instantly makes it better than like if you have to discard um and as well you can kill people earlier because if you check a crit during your first drive check uh your first triple drive with it you can stack the crit on gear next and if they can't guard gear next's second attack they just lose mm -hmm. it's literally the next day to just return cards to set a little thing though it's really solid i need to think about that I did want to get your opinion on um, the Claret Sword support that we did see for Shadow Paladins in this set because it, with that new uh, stride, it kind of made me want to build it to have as a fun deck because it seems like it's a little more, it, it's very aggro now compared to, it, it kind of reminded me of the Revengers instead of Legion Anger, just if it doesn't hit, I call more dudes. Are you talking about my opinion? Yeah, your opinion on it. Okay, um, when I first looked at the new Claret Sword stuff, <laughs> Honestly, this was before they released, like, or before I saw a lot of the Narukami stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, I was like looking into playing Luar next format, and I was like, oh, nice, like some Shadow Pine cards. I was really hoping that we got another Grade 3 Luar, but unfortunately, I'm not yeah. that lucky. So, like, I literally wanted another Grade 3 Luar that would do something to, like, fix Luar's weakness of being board white. But, um,. 
what got, what happened is we actually got more clarity support, which I did not expect. I just thought that they were letting that archetype die forever, ever since the Lord came out. Mm -hmm. um, but actually, like um, Helheim, I think it's Clear Sword Helheim, the yeah. Grade Three, or Helheim is the Grade Four, right? Helheim's Grade yes. Four, uh, and Revolt is the Grade Three. <laughs> yeah, so I think that those cards are actually like really, really solid. Um, backup to Lord now like i think that they'll actually like save you from um having to run fadla which is a, like a lot of Lord players like nightmare when they have to ride fadla i know it happened to me a couple times in jacksonville and i almost cried in a couple of the cases <laughs> uh but i happened to i guess pull it from behind from there but basically riding fadla is like if you don't get Lord within the first turn of striding after you go into fadla like you probably lose um because you're on a 9k and your opponent just beats your face in and goes ham. Um, but honestly, like, the, for the Claire Sword stuff, I think that it would be mostly, like, well fit into a Loire deck rather than just building a deck of it on its own, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, because not only did you get, like, Helheim, which is, like, you know, against stuff like uh, Narukami, where we were talking about targeting their cards is, like, kind of a no-no because it, if they have that great two on the board, you don't want to target or attack into it. Um, you basically have to like force enough pressure out of them to make them intercept with it, which is like, that's your premium play. Like that's what you really want to go for. Um, and all the play testing that I've had with it so far. So basically what it ends up boiling down to is uh, if your opponent only has G guards and PGs in their hand to guard with, that makes like uh, Helheim incredibly strong. You can also, like, force your way up in the G-breaks, like, earlier, so that you can GB8 your opponent earlier. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, because it's, like, Ishtar. Yeah, it I turbos know. really well if they have a bunch of perfect guards, and if they want a G-guard, if they want a turbo on your first stride turn and you're in Helheim, you just basically go, okay, I'll turbo with you. <laughs> exactly. So, like, um, in the case that, like, so, for example, I was running, like, the ward, and then first stride I went into Helheim, right? So first stride I went to Hellheim, uh, Hellheim. I used the arts on stride skill, and then I set up my board and then I attacked them with Hellheim, right? Mm -hmm. So when I attacked them with Hellheim, uh, they took it because they, you know, obviously like it's the Vanguard, I guess, strat to like take early damage where you can and then guard the later bigger threats. Yeah. Um, so he took the Hellheim and I actually checked uh, a critical and a draw trigger off of it. Um, which I think that it's amazing, by the way, that um, Shadow Paladin's got another Margul clone because Luard really struggled with Soul uh, for some of their effects. So I think that will be very instrumental in the case um, of Shadow players deciding in the future that they want to start running like five draw or six draw or something like that. Um, but yeah, he took the first Helheim attack um, and I crit him and he went to four. And then I attacked him with a like a Morfessa column because I was just testing Morfessa at that point. Um, and so he took the Morfessa column because he couldn't guard it. And then I attacked him with my column that got two triggers and then he G-guarded it. So then I was like, oh ho ho. And then I called a, a grade one to the board uh, and then I attacked his Vanguard again. And like he only had, I think three, four cards in his hand. And then he PG'd it. Because like he showed me his hand and he only had like grade threes and PGs. So oh then, no! <laughs> like I, I hellheimed him again and called two more grade ones and that was his first turn stride kill. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that, yeah, I think that card's like maybe like I guess it depends, but I really wish that we had a side deck in this game because yeah. like if we had a side deck, then I would like say run Hellheim at four and then if the matchup calls for it, you can switch into Doomed. And I would just replace my Doom with Helheim. Um, but as for it now, I think you it's like a decision type thing where you either choose to go all in with Helheim um, or you can just run two of it, honestly. Like if you get board wiped, it's still very good for you getting board wiped as well. Um, so you would, think, just real quick, so you would run, um, as far as grade threes real quick, you would run like four Luard and just two Revolt or uh, would the grade three go up to like maybe three? Like, how many Fodlas did you originally run? So, originally, um, in Jacksonville, I ran three Fodlas, but now I run four. Um, 
since I've been playing the deck now. Mm -hmm. uh, because now, like, ever since Jacksonville, um, we obviously got dropped, I think, GBA after that, um, and all that, like, stuff, so... Basically, with GB8 being around and with Night Rose being such a prominent force being around, which I'm also like thanking the gods that Narukami will crap on that deck because <laughs> that, that deck's not really around either anymore, and I just hate that deck for so much. So sorry, I'm glad Nick. That, it, it, that it's disappearing. <laughs> I mean, I own that deck. Don't get me wrong, and I won two events with it, but like. It's just like to, for me, it's really annoying to play and really annoying to play against because like they have everything. Like mm -hmm. they have like like people think that like, Gears have everything. No, 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 no. Night Rose has everything, especially when they have the GBA and when Mick was at four. Like that was just really ridiculous. It like, was, yeah. From not decking out, board wipe, multi attacks with good column numbers. Uh, retire on your opponent's turn and your own turn, and this is all in like one turn. Mm -hmm. Like, they can do this all to you in one turn. Like, Gears, pretty much, if they want to do one of their strong things, they have to commit to doing one of their strong things. So if they're yeah. going to commit to advantage, they have to do advantage that turn. Um, they can't really hit you for high numbers. If you check a trigger while they're doing their advantage melon plays, like, all they can do is keep going into their melon plays and keep doing what they were originally planning on doing, but they just won't force any cards out of you because you check the damage trigger. But, like... Night Rose is like, oh, you checked the damage trigger? Okay, cool, I'll just um, get this card from my drop zone that is 21 by itself, or 16 by itself, and still keep forcing guard out of you for no reason, uh, except for like counter blast one, and then like, literally the starter just says, oh, did you mess up at any point and waste any counter blast that you shouldn't have? Oh, uh, you can have your entire counter blast back free, yeah. <laughs> free of charge, so I just hate that deck a lot. But, <laughs> It's a love-hate like relationship um, with that deck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, going back to what I was saying about Fadla, is that I was I'm, I upped it to four now because of like all the strong control options that are all out. Um, also, I've tested Luard like pretty hard body with um, the new Blade Master stuff coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, the Blade Master deck is also very, very, very good, uh, and that like forces a change in meta. Like, in my opinion, like a deck either comes out and it's good enough to like change the meta by itself or it shifts the meta because of like how it interacts with other decks mm -hmm. in the meta so example because of like mbt12 because of narakami's existence uh night rose and luar dwindle yeah mm -hmm. um but you know stuff like that but i ran four fadas because like the control was so heavy but now that um the new Claret Swords coming out, and now that we they gave us a great one card that is literally Fadla, uh, for the art specific, that's mm -hmm. the card I was going to mention. Uh, that card's pretty amazing. Uh, the only thing that I don't like about that card, as opposed to Fadla, is that, and opposed to Cursed Eyed Raven, is that you have to call whatever you get off of it. So if you are in the late game, and you, like, I don't know, get triggers off of it or something, like, sometimes you don't want to call those triggers, but you just want to put them back into your deck, uh, which is pretty much what I do with Cursed Eyed Raven. Like, mm -hmm. if I go Cursed Eyed Raven and I check the top two cards, and one is a trigger, unless that trigger is Belial Owl, I usually just put it back to the bottom of my deck. Yeah. And I don't call it. Um, uh, or if I'm about to deck out and it's a draw trigger, I'll call it so that I won't check the draw trigger. Um, but, yeah, with that being said, like, I think the post-GB12 build of Luard moving forward will probably include zero Fodlas and maybe something like upwards of like three or four revolts mm -hmm. um, as the backup, and then you'll be running that grade one um, from Luar that is basically Fadla to uh, save yourself in two ways, um, and not just one. Like if you want to ride Luar, you have the grade one to save you from your board wipe, and if you run a ride revolt, you're already like saved by revolt mm -hmm. uh, on stride skill. Yeah, I will definitely say about Blade Master is I love how it also has access to the same place we've seen with Mick and um, uh, Vainglory Gearcat because Denial Griffin, um, you can pop something and then if you have that stand waiting, it gives Blade Master more defensive options than just I can kill stuff on your turn. It's also I can prevent you from swinging with slightly bigger rear guards. So I'm glad that it will probably be coming in into the meta for a little bit. Are you talking about um, the 
Kagura's stand trigger that is, is yeah. like Vainglory shuffles itself back and yeah. just in K. It's when something be... gets uh, just, uh, when something gets popped on your opponent's side of the board. Yeah, Lizard Soldier Viera. Yeah. Um, I don't. Well, I don't know what I think about like running that card in there because like to me it seems like the Blade Master deck to keep up they have to run like a lot of advantage cards. So the stand that I've been seeing them run is like Inspire Yell Dragon. Uh, that card is just ridiculously insane, in my opinion. Is that the one that returns to deck, you shuffle, give 5k, and you draw? Yeah. And okay. It's 5k for like the, until the end of the turn. So basically, when you're checking that card with um, Ziegenberg, like Ziegenberg is already such a powerful stride. Mm -hmm. But then you have like rear guards like Jargo, which is the grade 3, um, that gains 2k for every open one of your opponent's back row. So most of the time, your opponent's board is empty when you're Blade Master against them. Yeah. So that card is already 17 by itself. And then the Luar, or not the Luar specific, but the um, Blade Master specific grade two, that card is 19 by itself. Yeah. When it attacks you for counter boss one. And so you draw, yeah. Cards, like, right, so when you're giving these cards like 5K for the rest of the turn, like you're dealing with 22K, uh, 24k columns like already and that's like without them checking any triggers out of their four so like god forbid they check like a stand trigger or a crit and then do like crit power and then you have to guard against a 27 and a restand or something like that or like you know let's just say for a fact that they just check um crits versus stands like let's do a scenario so if you're at two damage um and they attack you with uh, the rear guard, and then they have like two inspire yells on the board, which is like a common play that I've seen. So you have a grade three Jarko on your board, and you have the grade two uh, Blade Master card, and you have like let's say three unflip counter blasts. Um, also, like the card that's just insane in that deck is the grade one Blade Master specific unflip card. Yeah, Nadell, like, he's card. really yeah. good, and he's 11k Nadelle. booster, so he just makes um. So yeah, if you take Jargo, for instance, where he's, what, a 21k, I think, by himself? He's, it, he's 17 by himself. 17. So he's 17. Yeah. If you put an Adele behind him, he's 28. You give a 5k trigger. He's th hitting 30... 33? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So literally, that's, uh, yeah, the 17 plus 11, yeah, 28, and then uh, 33. So like literally, let's say that you have... You can even have one Adele on the board and just have like two inspire yells and the inspire yell is the one boosting the grade two mm -hmm. so you attack with um your let's attack with the grade two first so you instantly are blaze uh your blaze triggers both inspire yells go off and let's say that you give both 5ks to the grade two and then you shuffle your deck you draw two cards and then you counter boss one your grade two gets 10k and then you draw another card so you just drew three cards and then um your grade two that's attacking is 29k so you attack for 29 uh and then you attack with ziegenberg so in a situation where you check crits like uh if your opponent guards or no guards like you're just crit power you know crit power to jargo crit power to jargo crit power to jargo um but in the situation where you like check stands it's like amazing because especially if you are lucky enough to get into the situation where you check a stand trigger on your first go through of Ziegenberg, mm -hmm. and then you restand the grade two, then you attack with the grade two again, counter boss one again, draw a card again, and then that card is attacking you for 34. And then after you attack with the um, with Ziegenberg again, you check another stand and restand the grade two again. Um, and then Jargo by himself with the boosted column is already like 30, 30, 33, 28. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, it honestly just depends, depends on their checks, but like, honestly, whenever I'm against like a Ziegenberg player, like, I know that it's gonna get really rough if they check four more triggers, like, two yeah. more triggers. Um, the builds of those that have been topping in Japan as well are the ones that are running like the, you know, heavy hand trap um, type thing. Yeah. Uh, Yu Gi Oh! style play, I guess I should say. Um, they have like their, you know, uh, their heel triggers, obviously. And then a lot of them I've been seeing are running like four Belogs. So uh, Belog is also just such a solid card. Mm -hmm. uh, stops a lot of things, like a lot of ridiculous things too. Like you can, um, 
I guess it depends on what starter you run, because I've seen like three different starters be run. So one is like the new blaze starter that retires itself. Yeah, Dita. Gives 3k and uh, you draw a card, I think. He, and, yeah, you counter charge, give something plus three and draw. Yeah. Yeah. So that card's really good. Um, obviously, Conro is the boy. Yeah. Uh, he's really good. Like I like running Conro in that deck specifically because of the the turn one play reminds me of uh, when Nobel used to dormant uh, dominate the format. Oh yeah. gosh. So with Nobel and Chaos Breaker were literally the only decks winning out of any of the decks that were out. Um, that was like BT15 format, I think. Or sorry, like BT... I think it was somewhere yeah. around there. It's either, I think it's, well, 12, 12, no. Yeah, so 12 was like when, um, when, uh, uh Swartz Child was out. Yeah, so it's... I remember that. So, yeah, that card. <laughs> I wasn't yeah, I think it was like 14, 15. <laughs> but, um, yeah, honestly, like, the it reminds me of that because, like, the turn one play that you can do, where let's say that you, um, you don't have a, you don't have the new grade three, um, in your hand, you have a Jargo, uh, and then you don't have a Stride Fighter as well. Like, what you can do is, you can turn your whole hand into like a turbo type thing where you ride a grade one, um, you use Conro to counter boss one and get the Stride Fodder from your deck. You call the Stride Fodder from your deck, you reveal Jargo, you get the new uh, Blade Master, and then you discard a card. Mm -hmm. And now suddenly you have Stride Fodder and you get to ride the original Blade Master. And you can do that turn one guaranteed every time if you don't have like the uh, Dragonic Blade Master. So I think like they're one of the most consistent clans to getting to their. Um, their main grade three, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of other clans suffer from that. Like, I know personally from experience in my decks. Like, let's just take them for example. Like Neo Nectar. Like, we suffer pretty heavily if we have to ride Marjuka instead of Asha. Yeah. Um, or if we have to ride Fava instead of Luar. <laughs> like, or if you in Blasters, which is pretty much impossible. Like, unless you don't run Google Brave, which if you don't want. Ring will brave, bless your soul. Yeah. But <laughs> run, we will brave you are you. <laughs> yeah. Didn't that exactly. card jump to twenty dollars over here? <laughs> or yeah, more than that? <laughs> uh, like, I think it's like thirty, thirty-five. Ugh, I got that for like five dollars. <laughs> Thank <Yeah>. God. <laughs> I have like six of them, I think. But which card? Mingle brave. Oh yeah. Well, it's around right. twenty-four. Yeah, it's just because, like, since I've been playing since the beginning of the game, like, I stockpile a lot of cards. So, back in the beginning of the game, when, like, when Wingo Brave was actually, like, really, really relevant, I mean, it's still relevant now, obviously, but yeah. when it, like, first came out, um, it was being used in the Magic Lord Blaster deck, which I played in BT5, and those were the times, like, basically, like, the only things that were good were the end in Magic Lord Blaster. Um... So I played that during that time, so I just, I guess, got a lot of Wingle Braves, but... I even remember that before Wingle Brave, Royal Paladin had to use crappy starters like the 6k Vanilla. Oh, well, no, 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 no. Before Wingle Brave... There was Bar... We had bar we yeah, had Barkle, Barkle, yeah. Barkle for a while, until they were like, oh, yeah, Barkle's ridiculous. Yeah, you yeah, can't, you can't use that anymore. It was, yeah, because you had that easy turn, like... Like, you ride turn one, and if you had everything, you just go straight to grade two. You didn't care. <laughs> yep. And another thing is, like, it would build soul as well. So a lot of things, like, people will say to me nowadays, like, Oh, Josh, what do you think of the ban list? Or, you know, like, don't you think it's crazy that they unban Conro, but they won't unban Barkle? And, like, if they unban Barkle right now, like... Literally, a, th a thing saver deck would emerge where they literally ride thing saver and have all the means to triple thing saver you immediately. Yeah, <laughs> like that would be ridiculous. <laughs> so it's it's just like you know, Bishrod. Uh, people think that Bishrod's stupid, but Bishrod does have their times where they consider their game state. Mm -hmm. um, now, other times, <laughs> Narakami. Um, I I don't know what they're thinking. <laughs> it's like and Ikihishima, like, those cards are just outright busted. Yeah. Well, honestly, it would be interesting to see, with all of the stuff that comes out um, after set 12, how we'll pick things up, because in my mind, like, 
in my mind, these things are already so powerful, like Iki Kishima. Like, I'm mm -hmm. hoping that that didn't, like, power, um, power trip too much. Um, because it's always bad when a game, like, power spikes too hard. Yeah. Which is why, which why, which is why, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh started to die a little bit. That's the reason Luck and Logic killed itself, besides bad marketing. Exactly, so, it's like, you... You really have to be good when you have a card game at uh, controlling the power spikes. Yeah. But um, definitely it'll be interesting to see how the new Link Joker stuff, um, their clan booster shakes the meta up because mm -hmm. obviously I think that will, you know, put a damper on OTT and Arakami since they're pretty rear guard reliant. Um, and then, you know, like locking their board depending on what the new chaos stuff does and what the new messiah stuff does i'm sure nick is very excited about that oh man uh, um <laughs> we have heard non-stop from him about how happy he is for it we're waiting for good parts to be spoiled <laughs> yeah he's uploading porn 30 days in a row for me yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah li literally it's just like i guess it's been a, like a really long time since like it, it just reminds me of like uh a meme that i saw that was like yeah, it had like Patrick Star as like a Spongebob meme. It was like Patrick Star underneath the rock and it just says that like Patrick Star is like the Link Joker player and then like when like Spongebob comes out and it has his hands up and it says new support and then Patrick Star's rock opens and he just has like that smile on his face. Oh god. <laughs> and like all, all the Link Joker players are coming out of nowhere now just being like Oh, I've loved Link Joker forever. I mean, obviously there are people that have been like loyal to it for a long time, but we all know that there are always those people that when the new, when something new for a clan comes out, they're like, "Oh, I've always played this clan." It's like, what you just picked up this deck last week? <laughs> yeah, just don't lie to us. Another <laughs> yeah. another thing is is that with the Zoo Nation booster coming out, our our boy JC, he he religiously plays Dark Face and Mega Colony, and just right here in he. Three months. Yeah, and he just he always makes sure to remind us whenever we give him crap about it to like about like like we're getting our support and he and he's so happy about it. <laughs> yeah, I um I've actually like during the meta where I don't know if you guys remember that meta, but there was a meta where Laurel was uh like rampaging. It was like right before we got G guards. Yeah. It was like literally metal borgs were dominating the entire format because mm -hmm. of how ridiculous they were with Laurel. Um yeah. And so back then, I ran a dark face with a brilliant blister, so that I could just brilliant blister them, and that they couldn't restand. I ran that um, deck for a while. Yeah, exactly. So. Metal orcs. Aw oh, man, I'm I'm disgusted with you as a person. <laughs> yeah, deck, it was the first deck I played in this game. Oh my god, I'm even more disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> that Nick, the Nick was absolutely ridiculous. Like, it's literally like, do you have it? Like, I would just ask my opponent, do you have it? Like, if I'm playing any deck that's not Mega Colony, yeah. uh, they, they start their turn, and then they stride into, um, what's that card? Carl, all, I, I call it, uh, Gold Digger, because, uh, they have a stride called Gold Digger now, but, yeah. like, literally, uh, Heavy Duke? Heavy yeah. Duke. Yeah. Heavy Duke. They would literally yeah. go into Heavy Duke, and then, before that, they didn't play any rear guards. So yeah. I had to I had to attack their Vanguard and give them damage. So if they're at like you know, especially if they're at four damage, and they're like all their counter boss run flipped, they go into Heavy Duke, and then I'm like, do you have it? And then they place the lower on the board, and then I extend my hand for a handshake. Like, <laughs> like, hey. and, like most of the time they just got it from that point because like either they would crit you, and then you you would they have guard restrict, so they would crit you, restand, and then guard restrict again, or. Um, their advantage would be way too powerful because they would draw like nine cards. That's when I played my first ARG in uh, all my games in my first match. I would do heavy, do, do pay for skill, swing. I would restand and not have enough counter busting for the second time. And people just didn't know at that point that you had to pay it both times. And they just said, I can't guard it. And I'm like, oh, okay. Right, exactly. I would just take yeah. it. And I'm like, I feel scummy, but I don't. <laughs> 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 Because you need to learn how to read kids. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel the same way, honestly, especially lately. Like, whenever someone, like, uh, does something, like, they think that I'm, like, sharking them or something. But it's like, if you didn't read your card, like, I don't know how I'm responsible for that I'm in like, my head. But yeah. I'm responsible for my half of the tape, but you're responsible for yours. I'll call you on your shit if you call me on mine. Yeah. Well, 
like to me like I'm responsible for what happens on both sides of the table but like what if what's happening on both sides of the table on the other side of the table is not technically cheating then I'm yeah. not gonna call them on it so yeah. it's like if they're obviously doing an illegal play you know I'll be like hey you can't do that because this 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 but you know, like, if, oh, if you, yeah exactly if you use a card that's useless or you use a card where you perform the cost but it can't do anything because you didn't pay attention it's like that kind of is on you and that's yeah. why the word misplay is a thing because you don't get to just take it back yeah you have to keep your misplay so especially in a, like a competitive event like some people will just expect you to be like uh like for example i had like i was playing some deck with resist i kind of forgot what it was and then i attacked uh, a gear chronicle player and they said G guard into header round, and they paid the cost. So blasted one, and then uh, they were like, "Select this unit," and I was like, "You can't. It has to resist." And then they were like, "Oh, okay. I'm just gonna take it back." And I was like, "No, no, 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 no. You can't do that. You already <laughs> so paid already, the cost, you dude. Paid the cost, <laughs> right? Exactly. So it's like he's like, really, bro. I'm like, well, yeah. You're the one that, like it's like they always make you into the bad guy. Like, how dare you like, call me on me not knowing how to do things? <laughs> Like, I, How dare really I prevent you from that. winning harder? <laughs> right, exactly. Like, in my opinion, I think that sharking is different from, like, actually telling someone what the rules are and, like, not allowing them to do a thing. Because, yeah. personally, when I'm teaching people, like, I make them keep their misplays even if I'm, like, teaching a newbie from scratch. Because, like, for me, whenever I make a misplay against someone, for example, like, against Nick, right, in Jacksonville, um, I didn't know the entirety of Jacksonville. Like, this is, like, probably my first few weeks playing Noir, like, when I went to Jacksonville. So, I didn't know, like, the almost the entirety of Jacksonville that Abyssal Owl was mandatory. So, every time I played Abyssal Owl from my hand, I, di I didn't perform the skill because I didn't want to. So, I didn't check top seven, and then, like, literally when me and Nick were against each other in top, I kept doing it, and neither me or Nick called it out on myself. And then, like, a spectator whispered to the judges, and the judge was like, both of you get a warning. And I was like, why? And he's like, because you didn't perform a Bisswile and it's mandatory. And then I read I it, and I, and I was like, oh, this entire tournament, I've been not using this card skill. But, like, the funny thing to me is, if I had been using a Bisswile skill, mandatory, it would do nothing but help me. Because it would thin out my deck. <laughs> yeah. And it, would shuffle, and it would shuffle my cards when I have belly oils in the bottom of the deck. Is it even a... Corum, you and I are technically judges. Is that even a warning? I don't think it is if you don't play an auto. Um, well, it's fa it's failure to resolve autos. Um, yeah, especially if it's mandatory. If it says, like, you, you have to do it, then you have to do it. But, again, that's, that's the whole thing behind reading the cards. Um... The thing is about that is both players are responsible for both players' effects. Kind of like, um, because I had to do a ruling over at Jacksonville uh, about like Knight of Twin Sword, and you know Knight of Twin Sword is on boost CB1, call a grade two, not named him, and basically the guy swung. The apparently the other guy guarded, and he went to go call something, and the person was like, "No, you can't do that." And but he's like, "But I can," and it was such a headache. I mean. You call judge the moment it happens. You don't escalate the game state further, and then you make it a headache for the judge trying to figure out what happened. But so, a fun fact: if all the cards are face down, you don't need to know rulings. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. But it should be because it was a level two tournament, and it will probably be under failure to resolve autos. Well, yeah. at the point that it was um. Me and Nick, it was level three because it was the finals. Yeah. Oh, it was finals. Okay, then yeah, yeah. It, it's level yeah, three. It's level three. The entire last day was level three. Four and I worked out them. So, yeah. So at that point, like, I didn't even know that that was a thing, and I still get shit from people nowadays where I'll like call a ruling on someone. And people are like, "Why don't you give him a little slack?" I remember when you were playing in Jacksonville, you didn't use a missile owl. I'm just like, that's different. Like, oh my <laughs> god, and it's not like. Well, the thing that was different for me is like it wasn't intentional. Yeah. But it's like literally, there's a difference to me in someone intentionally using their card's ability and selecting my card, which I have already pre-stated has resist or something like that. Yeah. For some reason why you cannot target it and then you just forget 
Like, that's the thing about me is like once I learn a card skill, I never forget. Like ever. Again. So like so once I learn it, it's like already, you know, programmed into my brain. So that's just up to me to remember the skill or not. Um so whenever a card played by my opponent, like I just know what it does. Put those games you to deck out so there's zero shit's given about that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it's just literally like for me, um, I don't know, it's just funny that like the one misplay or the one like thing that I got a warning on in all of Jacksonville was a thing that only would have helped me in the end. Like had I known it in all of my matches because yeah. I wasn't even in the games where I had Bala, um, I would play a Abyssal Owl, uh, but like sometimes I would forget to use it. But I wouldn't have forgotten to use it had I like had it set in my mind that it was mandatory. Um, <laughs> You, I'll just say you guys are lucky to have been players during that because man the stuff people came up to me on as I was judging the event dear god uh, oh yeah I, I know uh, there's a person from Georgia that's uh, kind of widely disliked and he was he was involved with a lot of judge calls I don't yep know if I remember the, oh, yep the I, well, yeah, the, that guy. well yeah. the guy got the beat, even though he cheated he's so bad yeah. he's you know, always funny. cheating that guy came up to Corm and I on day two and came to talk to us like about like him and the event and stuff. Like tried to have a heart to heart with us. He was like, "It's really hard whenever um, everyone's trying to keep you down and you're just here and you're better than them and all this other stuff." And Corm and I are just like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And then we left early that day and then we get the message from Nick that he got kicked out for doing really like, "Yeah, fuck that guy." <laughs> yeah, like literally. Uh, I play him in locals every single week, and he's just, I like that, I guess. His name is Tyson Shepard. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Am I gonna have to bleep that out? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, not at all. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty much like well-known knowledge, I guess. Yeah. He, like, there, was, there was a huge post made about it after the event, I remember it. And, I like, remember that too. people were blaming, and then someone name-dropped him, so... Yeah, I will definitely say, like, when it came to him, I had a bunch of people who, like, because I was supervising at least two of his games. One was against a Pale Moon Magia player, and the other one, I want to say it was Victor. Yeah, it was Victor. And I had people come up to me, it's like, why didn't you disqualify him? Why didn't you do this? And it's like, he did nothing wrong. I didn't see anything that stuck out to me that was, like, I have to punish him for it. He straight up scummed the like, great nature player he played against whenever I was watching him, and like round three of day two, he was doing some real scummy stuff. Oh, it, something really odd when he got caught. Oh, I'm sorry, I just stopped your story. Thank God. No, that was literally uh, he was just doing something scummy. Yeah. yeah so the, when he got caught cheating, like we did turn, or I did, uh, we did tournament math, and like I realized that both me and my opponent who were playing each other, who who I was playing, which was him in the scenario, had to win in order to get to top eight. It was there was no questions. If we lost, we were out. And I explained this to him as I was beating the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> but then, after I beat him, which he had some really weird choices in his deck too, which, which I wasn't sure if he got disqualified for. Is that after after I beat him, before they called top eight, they caught him in the hallway switching cards out of his deck. Really? This, that is what he was disqualified for, is he was switching cards in his deck. So, uh, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, because I told him he's not making top 8. Right. <laughs> his response to me was, I could still possibly make it, and I was like, no. You literally cannot. Mm -hmm. but, but, so there was... This once ago, he knows he's out, so maybe he's just switching some cards around. The other party was like, maybe there's still hope and he needs to make his deck this match. Uh, <laughs> there were some really weird choices in his deck that I just like didn't understand. Wait, you're you're talking about the Neo Nexer player, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. I feel like I don't I don't know if I should say what I'm thinking about. <laughs> oh, because all right, so I play Neo Nexer a lot, right? And uh, I won like an ARG or two with Neo Nexer before that, but I feel like because he lives in Georgia and he's always like, you know, coming. Um, to you know Georgia locals like back when I played Asha a lot um, there was some tech choices like always that I would do 
with Asha. And then I'd be like, oh, these tech choices are amazing, you know, like that. And then mm-hmm. he would run, like, he would try to find other cards to run as tech choices so that he wouldn't be compared to, like, a copycat of me. So, like, people, he would, like, run Neo Nectar and people would be like, wow, you're just copying Josh's deck, like, right off of his channel or something like that. And then I guess that would, like, irk him a lot. So he would try to, like, find these, like, Neo Nectar techs that are, like, way out there so that, like, he could be, like, unique and defined. But I guess, like, the thing is with me is, like, when I find a tech and I say that it works, it works because, you know, it's good. Not because I'm I'm not going to say, like, oh, I run this tech card that unfortunately sucks, but no one else ran it. So, you know, uh, I'm unique. So it's like literally even when I ran my text in Jacksonville, like the counterboss one promo tech that a lot of people didn't see coming. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people were like, oh, my God, that was such a creative tech for like right when Belly Owl came out. And I'm like, well, yeah, I, I wouldn't run it if it was bad. <laughs> I, I want to win. But, I'll definitely but, say uh, like net decking isn't bad in this game. Like there's only so many differences you can do. And most of the differences are bad if it's not the deck that's consistently topping. But, like, because right, yeah, you, you'll have people come out and, like, I love playing the Vanguard bingo whenever you get to watch the Facebook page and people just say all this stuff. And it's like, guys, there's only so many options you can put in a deck. And do you honestly want to, like, like handicap yourself by giving yourself, le- uh, like, subpar options? There, there's a reason, like, you yeah. run four of, of staples or why they're called staples. Like, man, look at Token Rock, they only have one deck they can actually play. <laughs> yeah, I mean, literally, for for me, like, it's like, I will allow a tech, or I will put in a tech in my deck, as long as it, A, doesn't change the consistency of my deck, and B, whenever I have it in my hand and it's not useful against the matchup that I put it in for, um... If I'm not playing the matchup that I put the tech card in for, and it's still fine in my hand, like it still does something. He's not it. Not it uses its maximum effect. Like, cause let's say like, for example, if I'm playing Gear Chronicle, right, and I run, uh, if I decide to tech in one copy of Undalulu, which is the card that gets two cards back from the bind zone yep. into your deck, and then you shuffle, you draw a card, and you soul charge one. Mm-hmm. So yeah. obviously that, that right, now. right. So it's like obviously that card would be most useful or most optimal against narakami but in the case that like i do like a double melum timely play and then i play that card like it's still useful because it's getting cards out of my bind zone or i can like intentionally um timely cards like double timely cards so that cards are lost forever quote unquote lost forever and then Mm -hmm. play undalulu like later and that just makes it useful in every other matchup that's not narakami yeah. Um, but if I just run something just to counter one clan, there's like, I don't know, 20 plus clans in this game. So it's like, it's literally like any clan can be ran. Like, I don't care what anyone says. If people are like, oh, well, you're just really going to see Gear Chronicle, Night Rose, and, um, and Luard. Well, like with me playing Luard, like if I tech my deck to only fight those three decks, and then I fight like Tachi Kaze or something, and I get Dogma. I'm screwed. Yeah. <laughs> which which yeah. actually happened. Like when I was playtesting, like I would, you know, try to tech in certain things so that I could beat um, Night Rose with Luar, because that's its hardest matchup in my opinion. So it's like you would try to tech in things to win that matchup. So then you start winning that matchup, and you're like, you feel pretty good about yourself until you get paired up with something that's not Night Rose. And then you're like, wow, this card's pretty useless in here. Or these cards don't work as well together or effectively together unless I'm being hit by Night Rose, retired on my opponent's turn, or, you know, whatever Night Rose specifically does that other decks can't do. Yeah. Um, So it's just like, you have to be really careful with tech cards, in my opinion, because, you know, like running too many um, can kind of be bad if it's not like a toolboxy deck, like, um, like, the I don't know why I was about to say the meet and up deck because I guess that deck like left an impression on me today when I was playtesting against it. But um, yeah, the meet and up deck is very toolboxy. Come BT12, um, Gear Chronicle obviously very toolboxy. Like the whole time loop mechanic is toolboxy. Yeah. Uh, what else? Rose, you think? You said what? Night Rose. 
Yeah, Night Rose. Night Rose is pretty toolboxy because mm -hmm. you basically just get rewarded for guarding. Oh my god, I'm so salty about that deck. So <laughs> about, like, literally, like, it's it's so ridiculous. Like, why do you get rewarded for guarding and rushing your opponent and then intercepting? And then literally nothing happens to you, but you're like, oh, counter blast one, call king serpent? <laughs> uh, counter blast one, soul blast one? Call the entire board, including the cards that I just intercepted with? <laughs> Feels good. <laughs> So oh, did all his banshees draw a million cards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I had, I had one of my opponents recently. I swear, I almost like just conceded the game because of how salty it made me. Like my opponent literally started the game. Uh, their hand was a grade one, a grade two, and three rough seas banshees. And then for, for the oh, like, draw for turn, they drew into rough seas banshee. So their turn one is like ride grade one, uh, keep Grenache in the soul. Uh, Rough Seas Banshee times four, past turn, <laughs> and then I was like, I was like, I should just quit right now. <laughs> like, like he head, drew the perfect like, hand off of that, he, he got his ride, he's got all his tech grade twos. <laughs> exactly, so he got like, he didn't have original Night Rose, like, in his hand, but he even told me the cards that he drew off of that were original Night Rose, a Stride Fodder, a Night Storm, and a Negro Lazy. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? And then the great two that he already had in his hand, by the way, was King Serpent. So oh really, he God. wrote the, the the Negro Lazy and then played the King Serpent to the Rigor Circle and then just intercepted with it. And then he was already set up to Ghost play without you. Oh my that. God, that's disgusting. Like, <laughs> and his first his first Ghost turn consisted of Counter Boss One, uh, call King Serpent to the board, Counter Charge One, Unbook One. Use Ghost to go. Uh, soul, soul Blast 5. Call 4 Rough Seas Banshee. Do and, it again. Uh, <laughs> and uh, 1 Grenache. And do it again. Oh my god. So, real quick, guys. Um, do we want to wrap up or do we just want to take a break? Because, um, Zeke, you have to go pick up I have people. To go take, I have to go take my girlfriend to her friend's house. So, do we want to wrap it up now or do we want to take a break? like get a drink and everything and we'll come back and record a second part <laughs> um we can i i also have to record one or two videos tonight mm -hmm. um for my channel but yeah i can be i can be back at any time like just let me know it takes me about 30 to 40 minutes to record a video i have an okay. off-air story to tell you about something terrible um, that you've taken away from me so who me i yes sorry <laughs> go ahead zeke um, real quick so We'll take a break. I'll be back in like I'll be back by eight thirty our time. Is that nine thirty my time? I'm on Eastern yes. Standard. Yeah, I don't be nine thirty. I'm sorry, I didn't know your time zone, so I wasn't sure what to say. Oh, it's okay. I'm from Georgia, so yeah, Georgia time zone, Eastern time zone makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll be back by eight thirty. I just have to drive like less than two or three miles over there and back, so I should be back before that. Whenever I come back, I'll make my presence known. All right, oh, so yeah, when you, I, I guess like in the time that you're gone, I'll try to like pump out one of my videos, and then that way when you come back, you can just shoot me a message, and if I'm still recording, it should be like only five to ten minutes before I'm done. Yeah. So that way I can like start editing and uh, uploading while we're talking on part two. Yeah. Right. That sounds um, great. I shot you a friend request by the way. I'll see you guys when I get back. All right. Okay. I'll see Alright, so we'll take a break and then part two. So, catch you guys in a bit.